I'm Dr. Katherine Lewis, the Executive Director of the Museum of History and Holocaust Education, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our virtual field trip. Over the next few minutes, you're going to have a chance to learn about what we offer here at the museum, from on-site to traveling exhibitions, to our outreach and public programs. You will also have a chance to meet history face to face. Our traveling and on-site exhibit will introduce you to men and women who witnessed the Holocaust and World War II. Our five traveling exhibits feature important stories of the time period, including those of the Ravensbrück concentration camp in Germany and of the contributions of women to World War II. These exhibits reach thousands of visitors each year in libraries and schools across the country and are available at no cost. Our on-site exhibits provide an in-depth account of the history of the Holocaust and World War II. V for Victory explores Georgia's contribution to the war. We also have an exhibit about the famous Tuskegee Airmen. Our signature exhibit, Parallel Journeys, tells the story of 40 teenagers who witnessed the Holocaust and experienced the devastation and destruction of this important period in history. Through personal stories, we invite you to consider what you would have done if faced with similar circumstances. We would like to introduce four of those stories now. Jan Jors was born in 1922 in Belgium, and by the age of 12, he set out in search of a group of Roma or gypsies called the Lavara on the outskirts of town. Over the next six years, he traveled widely, and he was informally adopted by a Lavara family. At the beginning of the war, he joined the British Army and he convinced his Roma friends to aid intelligence units in smuggling arms to the resistance. Jan and his friends were captured and sentenced to death, but a case of mistaken identity set Jan free within six months. With the help of the Allies, he successfully impersonated an SS officer, going behind enemy lines to rescue many intelligence officers, pilots, and others. He was once again captured and sent to the Miranda concentration camp, where he was held until the end of the war. By 1950, he was living in New York, he had opened his own art studio, and he went on to publish four books, including The Gypsies, in 1967. Hello, my name is Alan Davies, and I was born in London, England in the early 1930s and spent a number of years after World War II started dodging the German Luftwaffe, who were intent on destroying much of London in the hope of getting Britain to surrender. I was evacuated a total of three times by the British government who organized areas in the countryside to receive hundreds of thousands of London children in an effort to keep them alive. During the time I was in the countryside, I was there without family and friends, and it was at times a very stressful experience. In 1942, my father was called up and spent the next four years overseas in the British Army in various theaters of operations during the European campaign. I would hope that you can come to the History and Holocaust Museum and learn more of my story. I'd like to introduce you to a story of courage and great sacrifice. Rosa Roboto is from Poland and she was born into a wealthy family. When the war broke out, she joined the Polish underground and was ultimately deported to Auschwitz. While there, she was forced to work in a munitions factory and she, along with another group of women, uh, came up with quite an ingenious plot to smuggle gunpowder out of the factory back into the camp in the hems of their skirt 
That ultimately contributed to the Sonderkommando uprising that destroyed one of the crematoria. So Rosa and her compatriots helped save the lives of thousands. She was ultimately captured and executed. But before she died, she left, as you see here on the exhibit panel, a note in her cell that said, be strong and brave. So when you come to the museum, you'll have a chance to learn more about her story. Margaret Lambert was born Gretel Bergmann in Germany in 1914. She grew to be a wonderful athlete. Her feet were size 11 and her legs were wonderfully long, which suited her beautifully for the high jump. She was poised in 1933 for the Berlin Olympics that would take place in 1936. However, Hitler came to power. She was excluded from her sports club in Germany, like many other Jewish athletes. So she moved to England, where she could compete, and in 1934, she won the British women's high jump. In 1935, Margaret returned to Berlin, forced to return by the German authorities to join the Olympic training team. However, one month before the Olympics were to open, she received a letter saying that she would not qualify Margaret's story continues in a book she has written herself by Leaps and Bounds. There's a wonderful film, Berlin 36, as well as another documentary called Hitler's Pawn, all telling the story of a young German Jew who was used by Hitler in an effort to advance his dream of the greatest Olympics ever. The Museum of History and Holocaust Education hosts lectures, film screenings, and other special events that are free and open to the public. We have curriculum packets for elementary, middle, and high school students that are easily available through our website. Our outreach team can bring traveling trunks focused on World War II and the Holocaust to your school, library, or community center. Many of our Kennesaw State University students serve as student interns. We also have an active volunteer program. We look forward to welcoming you to the museum and to Kennesaw State University. Come meet history face to face.